Brad Lamb joins me here in studio. He's a Toronto-based property developer. Nice to see you, Brad. See you. So the government is it says is closing this a tax loophole that right. basically benefits a lot of foreign buyers, not exclusively foreign buyers, but speculative buyers, I guess you could say. What do you think about this initiative? Well, I mean, first of all, there isn't a widespread abuse of this. Uh, you know, there, there are some bad apples in every marketplace. Mm-hmm. And in, in Vancouver and Toronto, I'm sure other places in, in Canada, there are tax cheats. But the reality is that if you buy a home, so the, the, the change is that you have to be a resident prior to buying a home. You actually have to live in the place. You, well, someone has to live in the someone. place. Right. So, but the big change is you have to be a resident prior to buying the home. But, but the following year, you can still get the tax loophole. It doesn't change. So all that means is that for a period of you know, anywhere from, from 1 to, to 12 months, where you weren't a resident when you were living in the house, if you're a resident eventually, then that year, you can make the claim if you sell it in the next year, it is tax-free. So it's a small amount of extra taxation that the government's going to get. It's only the appreciation from the time you weren't a resident by the Tax Act to the time you were. It's not going to change anything. What would you say, though, that there are a lot of people that buy condos or homes in places like Toronto and Vancouver who, who, who this isn't their primary residence? So they so and, and but they're taking advantage of this either by having I don't know maybe their kids or some family or friends or something, mm-hmm. and they're just flipping. Yeah, well, so th- those people should be caught by CRA and they should pay the proper taxes. But it's not a it's not an epidemic. Like for instance, in in, in, in my industry in Toronto, uh, there are a fair number of students that go to U of T or go to McMaster, go to any other local university. Uh, their parents buy them home to live in. They live there as a residence. When they're done university after four or five years, they sell it. It's tax-free. Mm-hmm. Can't change that. That's tax-free. They, they follow the Tax Act accordingly. So this, what they're talking about is a very tiny loophole with very few number of people that are going to affect it. So all this really is, is there's a lot of upset people in Canada about higher house prices, mm-hmm. and the government can't really do much about it. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, okay, we're going to do something about it. Mm. You know, and, we've, and, and, and let's blame the foreigners for our problems. Our problems in this country, in Toronto and Vancouver, we have a problem about housing. It's because we have a lack of supply of new housing. We don't have enough housing to satisfy those that want to buy it. So what can we do to change that? We need to add more lots to the system. We need to make the process of redeveloping property faster. And that's government stopping it. And That's so what we have to do. When you say housing, do you mean like single-family homes, or do you mean condos? You mean both? Well, let's take Toronto. There hasn't been any significant increase in, in the supply of single-family homes in the 416 in 60 years. Now, do you expect that, that a city is going to grow over 60 years? I think so. So what has the government been doing over the last 60 years about land planning for single-family homes, for, for, for detached and freehold-type property? They've done nothing. In fact, they've, the provincial government has narrowed the supply by creating a green belt. That's taken thousands and thousands of lots off the market. Now, I'm not suggesting the green belt should be changed. I'm just saying that's a policy that's forced the single-family home market, namely detached homes and semi-detached homes, through the roof. Okay. Uh, last hour, I spoke with John Andrew. He's a real estate expert at Queen's University. Well, just listen to what he had to say. Well, I think these are good, good first steps. The federal government des- definitely has to have... Um, you know, better records of registry of, of exactly who these foreign investors are and so on. But I do see it as, as a good first step, but the enforcement will really be the key component here. So, Brad, you're saying that you don't really know, you don't, we don't believe that this is an epidemic, but do we really know? Do we really have a handle on who lives in all these condos, who lives in all of these homes? Yeah, I think I think we have a pretty good handle on it. I mean, I think that, that uh, you know, there's, there's freedom in this country where – you're allowed to have a certain level of secrecy in your dealings. I mean, not everything has to be open. But this is what I would say. I can't speak to Vancouver because I don't develop in Vancouver. I sell across the country, but that's one city we don't work in. But I can tell you in Toronto, the, the foreign buyer, which in this case is mostly Chinese, is not active or very active in the single-family home detached freehold market. They're active in the condominium market. And how they're active is they'll buy a condominium four or five years before it's built. So they're funding our construction industry in the creation of new rental property. Now, that's a great thing. That's not a bad thing. We shouldn't be afraid of that. We should be we should applauding that. In fact, the hundreds of thousands of new condominiums that got completed in Toronto in the last 10 years have helped us grow our hotel industry 
have helped us grow our, our commercial high-rise industry. Those industries would be zero without the condominium market, and frankly, a large part of that is foreign buyers. And there's nothing wrong with that. Someone buying an apartment and not taking it for their own purposes and renting it, that adds to the rental stock of the city, and we, we need that. We need more rental stock. Do you worry as a developer that some of these initiatives are going to, you know, make the market too cool? The initiatives announced today are non-issues. They're going to do nothing, nothing to change the marketplace. Nothing at all. So then what's the Zero. point? I think the point is, is that we want to find fault with someone about why our house prices are high. And we're blaming foreigners, and it's not a foreigner issue. It's a local issue. We need to increase the supply of housing in these two cities. All right. Brad, good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Brad Lamb is a Toronto-based property developer.